We have the governing equations for a three-dimensional problem, the uh, Navier-Stokes equations or the equation for the vorticity field. Now it's time to be specific and talk about the problem we're actually going to solve, which is the flow past an infinite cylinder. So let me start by drawing the cylinder. So here's a cross-section of our infinite cylinder. It's infinite in this direction, coming out of the light board. This cross-section of the cylinder, circular cylinder, has a radius of r. Um, so that's uh, our flow is going to be um, uh, coming into the uh, cylinder. If we draw the free stream velocity, it will look like... Um, this one, let me draw the velocity field in red. So it's coming in um, in this direction, we choose. So this is the free stream velocity. Um, and now at this point, we can draw a coordinate system. So we want to draw the x-axis in the direction of the free stream velocity. So we draw the x-axis in this direction. So this will be x. And we want to draw the y-axis then um, perpendicular to the free stream velocity. So this is our y-axis. Okay? Uh, the free stream velocity then is in the x-direction. So we can write the free stream velocity u sub f, which is a vector is equal to a constant uh, u times the unit vector in the x direction, because that's how we've defined the coordinate system. Okay, so this is our flow geometry. Um, uh, for non-turbulent flow, the velocity field will never go in the direction of the z-axis, will always stay in this plane. And um, furthermore, so the velocity field won't point in the z direction, but it also won't depend on the z direction. So every cross section of the cylinder will have exactly the same velocity field. That's for a non-turbulent problem. If the fluid becomes turbulent, then you get random motion and you can have motion in z and the flow field itself can depend on z. But we're going to be doing non-turbulent flows in this class. Um, in that case, then we can write the velocity field u as um, a component in the x direction, which I'll call scalar u, that depends only on x and y. It may also depend on time for unsteady flows. Uh, here, I'll leave the time dependence out. And this is in the x direction, plus the uh, velocity field in the y direction, we call v, which is a function of x, x and y, and that's in the y direction. So j is the unit vector in the y direction. So this is our velocity field. Um, then there are two cases here. There's a steady flow where the velocity field will be independent of time, and there's the unsteady flow where the velocity fields will depend on time. For the steady flows, we can say something else about these uh, velocity fields. If I draw um, how we expect the velocity field to behave as it passes the cylinder, we expect the velocity field to come in and then avoid the cylinder, so it's flow around the cylinder. Uh, this is in the positive y um, plane, and in the negative y plane, it will come in and avoid the cylinder like so. So this would be our expectation of the velocity field. Here I've shifted a little bit, but you get the idea. Um, so what does that mean in terms of u and v? Well, if we look at the velocity field uh, at some fixed x 
but in the lower half of the plane, so if y is positive at negative y, the x component is going to be identical, right? Whether you're above or above a distance y or below a distance minus y. So this is an even function of y. So this will be u of x comma y. Okay? What about the vertical component of the velocity? So if we look at v at negative y, right? So here it's going down and up. Here it's going up and down. So it changes sign. So this is equal to negative v of x and y. So the y component of the velocity is an odd function of y. We will make use of this symmetry to um, improve our computational time of our program because then we only need to solve for one half of the plane. The bottom is just satisfying this even odd symmetry. So let me summarize. We're going to start now to specialize to our particular fluid problem, the flow around an infinite circular cylinder. We're going to look at a cross-section of the cylinder and consider only non-turbulent flows, at which point the velocity field is independent of z, and, only de and the vector itself only points in either the x direction or has a component in either the x direction or the y direction. There's no flow going in or out of the board. I introduced the idea of a free stream velocity where far away from the cylinder, the velocity is flowing then with my definition of the x coordinate in the, only in the x direction with constant velocity. So that will be true far in, in, um, in front of the cylinder, far behind the cylinder, far above the cylinder, and far below the cylinder the velocity will satisfy the free stream condition. I'm Jeff Chasnov. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.